So we need to start this chapter by looking at chemical equations. Remember a chemical formula is right here. It contains different atoms that make up the formula. A chemical equation is what we get when we combine things. There's a few things that you need to remember when you're reading chemical equations. First of all, we read them from left to right, but we'll see later on in the year they don't necessarily always move from left to right. Um, on the left-hand side of the equation, these are called the reactants. And this is what we start with. These are the starting substances. On the right-hand side of the equation, these are called products. This is what we produce in the equation. So I would read this as hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water. I could also read this like two moles of hydrogen gas react with one mole of oxygen gas to yield two moles of water. So there's a lot in here that we're going to take a look at. The plus sign is usually read as reacts with, and this is read as, the arrow is read as produces or yields. In the front of a chemical formula, you'll notice there are numbers. These numbers are called coefficients, and coefficients represent mole ratios between the substances. So it's to say that there is a two to one molar ratio between hydrogen and oxygen in water. Now you could have probably predicted this because water has a two to one ratio between hydrogen and oxygen, but that's not exactly what it means because here it shows us that we have two H2s. So there's an H2 and there's an H2. And then we have one O2, which forms two H two O's. And when I draw water molecules, they often look like kind of little, little Mickey Mouses here. Let me draw my waters a little bit bigger. So again, I have four hydrogens, one, two, three, four, two oxygens that form four hydrogens and two oxygens. They just rearrange. And these coefficients tell us what the ratio is. The number one is usually omitted, but when you very first start, if it makes you feel more comfortable to draw the number ones, go ahead. Also in a chemical equation, you may find the states of matter. The first three are familiar to us, solid, liquid, and gas. So in this equation, I can see I have gaseous methane, reacts with gaseous oxygen to form gaseous CO2 and liquid water. Um, sometimes you will also see something with an AQ. This is called aqueous or a water solution. I'd like you to think about salt for a minute, NaCl, because it's something you can picture. If you had liquid salt, that would mean that you took the salt and you made it really, really, really hot and you melted the salt into liquid salt. That doesn't happen very often. In fact, it's, it's almost impossible. But what you can do instead is you can add the salt to water. And when you dissolve the salt in water, we get what's called an aqueous solution of salt. So you're gonna see this a lot in chemistry. And like I said, it just means that things are dissolved in water. They're sometimes not shown in the chemical equation, but when they are, they give us a little bit more information. So if I were to look at this chemical equation here, again, I read it from left to right. I would read it like this. One mole of methane gas reacts with two moles of oxygen gas to produce one mole of carbon dioxide gas and two moles of liquid water. There's a lot of information being held inside this chemical equation. Sometimes we say it, 
sometimes we don't. We may say this like methane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water, if we're just saying it quickly. Or I might say everything available to this. Now keep this in mind as we move on. Because what we're going to be practicing today is balancing equations. The reason that we balance equations is because of the law of conservation of mass. So in a chemical reaction, atoms rearrange. No atoms are created or destroyed. In other words, the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products. Let's go back and look at this chemical equation. I've got CH4. So I've got one carbon over here, and it's attached to four hydrogens, all right? Then I've got oxygen, and it's bonded to other oxygens, and I have two of them over there. So that is my two O2s. What it becomes is carbon attached to two oxygens, and then I also get water, which are my ones that I said before, kind of look a little bit like Mickey Mouse to me, H2O. So if I were to go back and count all of these atoms, even though I know that methane has nothing to do with water and nothing to do with carbon dioxide and rearranging them changes them completely, the original atoms are there. There are one, two, three, four carbons, one, two, three, four carbons. So there are four carbons on both sides. One, two, three, four oxygens, one, two, three, four oxygens. Um, the hydrogens, or I'm sorry, I already counted those. The carbons, there's just one carbon and one carbon. So I'm sorry, there are four hydrogens and four hydrogens. I think I misspoke. So when we look at this, we can say that this is balanced, and that's because these coefficients have been added. So one carbon, four hydrogens, and four oxygens. On that side, one carbon, four hydrogens, and four oxygens on that side. They are balanced with each other. You can see here the coefficients mean that there are two O2s. Never forget what that really means. It really means that you have four oxygens all together. So let's take a look at this. Potassium plus sulfur yields K2S. Now, you might be asking yourself right away, why did she say K plus S equals K2S? Why didn't she just say K plus S equals KS? Well, you can't forget what you learned at the beginning of the year. You can't forget that you know that potassium has a positive one charge, sulfur has a negative two charge, and you can crisscross or however you like to think about this. But when you get potassium sulfide, it has a chemical formula of K2S. You can't change that. You can't make it KS just because it's convenient for you. So in order to get this to balance, what you'll need to do is just simply add a 2 in front of that K. This is called balancing the equation. So now we have two Ks over here and one S. Over here, we have two Ks attached to one S. So I've balanced the chemical equation. You never, ever, ever change the formulas. What you cannot do is add a two down there. All right, that would change the equation. You never change the chemical formula. If more than one element or compound are needed, put the number needed in front of the formula. And that's right there. It's called the coefficient. So we get the above equation is 2K plus S yields K2S. And if we read that, it's two moles of potassium plus sulfur 
yields potassium sulfide. Now here's some tips. These are not very helpful when you first, first start, but I assure you that after you get going, you should come back and look at these. The first tip is balance elements that appear twice on one side of the equation last. In this case, it's oxygen. So if I were to look at this, this is a pretty tricky one to balance. I am not going to start with my oxygens. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my carbon. So I have two carbons over here. I'm gonna fill in so I have two carbons over there. I'm gonna go back to this side and see that I have six hydrogens. So in order to make this six hydrogens, I'm gonna go ahead and put a three there. Now working last would be the oxygens. So I have two oxygens over here. And over here, I have two times two, or four oxygens, three times one, or three oxygens, which gives me seven oxygens. Now, I can't write 3.5 here. That doesn't work. So this entire thing is wrong, and I need to double it all. I need to turn this into a two, which now turns this into a four. And remember those two times six hydrogens, this is gonna be six times two hydrogens, which gives me an even number of oxygens, which makes it so that I can balance this. A couple lessons I learned here. First of all, this one is hard. This is a hard balancing. Um, I was able to do it so quickly because I'm a chemistry teacher. You may struggle with it. Do not be afraid to erase. There is a back and forth that you need to do to make sure everything balances. If you get yourself totally screwed up, erase it all and start over again. Finally, you can always check your work. You can always say, all right, there's two times two or four carbons on this side. There's two times six or 12 hydrogens on this side and seven times two or 14 oxygens. And I wanna make sure that I also get four carbons on this side, um, which I do. I get 12 hydrogens on this side. I get six plus uh, four times two is eight or 14 oxygens, okay? Tip number two. Keep the polyatomic ions together when you inventory. So if we look here, CO3 is a polyatomic ion and it's over here as well. That makes balancing easy. I can say, all right, I've got three CO3s over here and two on that side. So I wanna put a two here and a three here, right? Because this now gave me six CO3s and three times two is six CO3s. Now go ahead and keep balancing. You've got three coppers on this side and three coppers on this side. You have two aluminums over here, so you want to make two aluminums over here. Go ahead and check your chlorines. Two times three is six or six chlorines. This is now balanced. Tip number three. Balance elements that appear all alone on one side of the equation last. So I'm going to balance aluminum last or iron last. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at this one and balance it. CO3, there are three of them. CO3, there are three of them. There's one of these, there's one of these, there's one of these, there's one of these. This is already balanced. Do not be afraid to not balance things if they are already balanced. I told you we do not write ones in chemistry. But you can imagine ones in front of all of these. And then tip number four, balance water and oxygen last. And you can see here we balanced oxygen last up here. That's actually pretty helpful. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to use your eraser. Um, start easy and then move to more difficult. And if you get yourself completely messed up, erase it and start all over again.